Hi, my name is Diana and welcome today uh, for you to join into my TED Talk. Today I will going to talk about rape culture in films and televisions. Before I'm mentioning about my speech, I wanted to give up a heads up first that in this speech there will going to contain sexual violence descriptions. So please be aware of that. When I was young, I grew up watching a lot of movies and films and televisions. Well, it has influenced me a lot on my behavior, my communication skills, as well as the way I think. Well, not until now, not until recently that I have realized that I have been influenced a lot with my idea and at the same time, the idea of rape culture. So what is rape culture and why am I even telling you about this? Well, Rape culture is the society or the environment that trivializes or normalizes sexual abuse or sexual assault. And the reason why I wanted to tell you about this is because I wanted to remind each of us that what the movie is portraying to us or what the movie is trying to claim that they're portraying to us is only on the tip of the iceberg. And the impact of us the impact of what the movie has on us are way more detrimental than that. Well, you might be thinking right now, not everyone is being influenced by movies. Well, I guess that it is true. However, according to a social learning theory, children imitate models to learn about gender specific behaviors. As children, teenagers or even college students. It is impossible for us to learning about sexuality as there are not as much information coming from the school or even parents. Therefore, many students or college students rely a lot on movies and films for that. According to a recent research by Kennedy and Sean on sex violence on TV, um, on the correlation of sex violence on TV and teen pregnancy. The research conducted on teenagers and children from the age of 12 to 17 years old, and the results have shown that teenagers with more exposure to sexual violence on TV is two to three times more likely to get pregnant or impregnate someone else rather than the peers who doesn't. So before I begin to mentioning what are the ways that sexual violence is being implied within films and televisions, it is important for us to be able to distinguish the difference between many types of sexual abuse, namely sexual assault, sexual harassment, as well as rape. Well, first of all, what is sexual assault? Well, sexual assault is when a person intentionally sexually touches another person without their consent. While sexual harassment is the way that the person used explicit or implicit overtones that promises of sexual relations as a reward. And lastly is rape, is when a person um, conducted sexual intercourse against the victim without their consent. Well, now that you have fully aware of different types of sexual abuse, I wanted to go into my TED talk. And today I will going to talk about how rape culture in films and televisions are being implied through the use of tropes as well as languages. So what are tropes? Tropes are the common and the universal theme that is used widely within movie. Some of the tropes that I find disturbingly is first of them is when the rapists assume women's no is a yes. For example, in the movie of Gone with the Wind, Scarlet and Red are a couple. However, during their fight with each other, Red has threatened to kill her, and therefore, due to scare and terrify, Scarlet has ran away. However, Red has ran into her, catches her, and forces himself upon her. Despite many attempts that Scarlet wants to get away, the movie direction showing that Scarlet was aroused by that. The portrayal of this trope is misleading to the audiences 
as it teaches the audiences to understand a request in the opposite manner from what has been said. Not only that, the movie also shows how consent is being minimalized and the consent uh, and the woman consent is more inferior compared to men and not being taken as seriously. Secondly, another disturbing trope that I have also found is when the victim falling in love with the rapist. For example, in the movie Glee, which I have watched recently, that the character Puck and Quinn, uh, the character Puck has drunken the character Quinn and he attempts to rape her. And on the next day, Quinn falls in love with Puck. This trope is also misleading as well as problematic as it teaches the audiences that it is normal to be friended with the rapist and that making them to fail to recognize the toxic, abusive relationship that they are currently going through with the rapist. And lastly, the trope that I also found quite disturbing to me is the trope that defined manhood as dominant and sexually aggressive while womanhood as submissive and sexually passive. This trope is quite disturbing as well because it's showing that the victim is an object and sexual objectification woman and that woman is used as an object to relieve male sexual desires. Not only that, it also stereotyping how each gender should behave and that's showing that women are more inferior compared to men. And this trope also extended through the use of languages. For example, the languages such as boys were going to be boys or what is she wearing? Or even the languages that is slut shaming the women or the victims. And these are problematic because it helps to minimalize the seriousness of rape and at the same time normalizing victim blaming. Tragically, these languages is already used a lot throughout our everyday life as well as in reality as this hindrances many women and many victims to report their cases as they were afraid of being victim blamed. In the end, it is impossible for us to remove all of the rape culture content or even uh, out of movies or even out of our minds. However, it is possible for us to change our mindsets when watching movies. As a young teenager and adult, what you can do is to improve upon your media literacy skills. By this, I mean what you can do is to be skeptical of what you see and be able to identify the different tropes and messages that is being applied within the movies. Not only that, it is important for you to be able to distinguish between reality as well as movies. And I also wanted to encourage each of you to be an active and engaged movie watcher instead of passively receiving information that you gain from the movie. And for authoritative figure such as the adult or school, it is important for you to help integrated sexual education or talk to your children. I totally understand that children with the age under 18 are too young to talk about this. However, according to statistics taken by UNICEF, one in every 20 girls are being susceptible to sexual abuse before the age of 20. Therefore, by giving them the talk and teaching them how to protect themselves, is essential at an early age. And lastly, it is also important for the adults in the society to create an environment that is open and welcoming toward sexual abuse victim for them to be able to voice out their cases and not making sexual abuse or rape a taboo. Prohibiting slut shaming is also a way to help. With the theme of expedition, to the hidden nine tenth. I wanted to encourage each of you to be more open-minded. Not only that, to be more active media watchers 
and at the same time to teach this to your friends, your peers, your siblings, or even your family to raise their awareness upon this issue. Thank you for listening.